What's going on TSG? My name is The Lightning. Before I get into anything, I'd like to say a big thank you to Thunder for everything he does here on YouTube and also what he does in real life. It's amazing that someone so big on YouTube like Thunder helps out some of us smaller guys on YouTube get a chance, get a spotlight to get some viewers so they can get bigger on YouTube. And I just have to say a big thank you. It's amazing what you do here on YouTube. But I know a lot of you people that are watching this video aren't just Call of Duty gamers, but you guys are gamers at your core. Me personally, I do play a little bit of Call of Duty. Black Ops 3 is probably going to be the last Call of Duty I buy, but I moved on to other games like Destiny. I do a lot of Destiny on my channel, and I play other games like Halo and Star Wars Battlefront when that stuff comes out. I know that some of you people do play a lot of Call of Duty, and that's like the only game you play, but I know a lot of you guys are like me, and you guys play other games, and you moved on to other games like Destiny and Halo and stuff, but this accusation will make you all mad, and that's that video games are bad for you, and that they cause violence. Saying video games are bad for you is a scapegoat, faceless accusation, and a decade-old myth. I know the majority of you people that are watching this video are between the ages of 12 and 18. I know there are a few people that are probably in their 20s, 30s, and 40s, but for the most part, you guys are actually pretty young. I'm guessing most of you guys really don't know how to support your argument with evidence, which there's actually more evidence that video games are good for you than there is evidence of video games being bad for you. Stay tuned because this is about to get very factual, and when some retard or some dumbass politician says that video games are bad for you and cause violence, you can tell them what I'm about to tell you now. All the facts and numbers I'm about to tell you right now have been conducted by studies from a university. Studies show that gamers score 23% higher than non-gamers in creativity tests, tasks like drawing pictures and writing stories. Gamers also use teamwork better than non-gamers. When someone was getting physically harmed, 11 out of 20 gamers would help, unlike the 7 out of 20 non-gamers would help. Border security control personnel said that they performed better after playing a 3D simulator video game. Surgeons that play video games are 27% faster and 37% more successful in advanced surgery. That is insane. That is the difference between life and death in most cases when it comes to surgeons. The university studies also say that gamers are better at problem solving, negotiations, communication skills, and the list goes on. As you guys can see, video games can be very good for you just from those facts. I have some more facts coming up right now. Video games are the biggest entertainment source in the world. Video games also make the most money in the world in the entertainment business. With new technologies like smartphones, anyone can have an archive of video games anytime, anywhere. 80% of households in America own a gaming console and 91% of American kids are gamers. As you guys can see with these numbers, video games are becoming very popular in America and especially with the younger generations. This is where it's super easy to blame video games for violence just because a lot of people in America play video games. So if you are an American, there's a good chance that you're also a gamer. A big argument for video games are that video games are violent, but so is the rest of the entertainment industry. Video games are the most popular genre, make the most money in the entertainment industry. This is another reason why it's easy to blame video games for problems. Just like TV, video games also have a suggested age rating. Let's take for example The Walking Dead. I love The Walking Dead, it's probably my favorite TV show and it's the only reason I have direct TV. The Walking Dead shows a group of survivors trying to survive in a zombie apocalypse. It is very graphic but also very violent. They don't just kill zombies but they also kill other humans. Most of the bigger TV shows have a lot to do with violence. So if you're going to blame video games for violence, you might as just blame the whole entire entertainment industry. Guys, I do love The Walking Dead, but I'm just saying if you're going to blame video games for violence, you might as just go ahead and blame the whole entire entertainment industry. Since we're talking about the entertainment industry, let's talk about other sources of entertainment. TV, books, and video games are a great way to experience a story. These are the three biggest sources of entertainment. Video games, however, are the best at experiencing a story. TV you can watch the story happen and is arguably the worst way to experience the story. Books, you are reading the story and you can let your imagination go wild. The reasons TV is more popular than books is because TV does most of the work for you. If you read a book, it can take a lot of knowledge and uses more of your brain. TV, you really just have to watch the story. Video games take both great aspects of books and TVs and combines them. It doesn't take a lot of your brain to play a video game. 
but you can also let your imagination go wild. In a video game, you are in the world, but you can do whatever you want to do. If you want to take your time in the game, you can do that. If you want to rush through the game, you can do that also. Let's take, for example, Madden. In Madden, you have the football team that you want with the football players that you want. Playing against a football team that you want to play against. You call the plays and you choose how you want to play the football game. In video games, you just sit back and enjoy the experience. Most of the time, your gameplay experience will be different than someone else's. Just like TV and books, video games are a indoor activity. Not everyone is an outdoors person and some people just want to stay inside. Just like any activity you do, whether it be indoor or outdoor, you must limit yourself. Too much of something can be bad for you for example water is very good for you but if you drink too much of water it can be bad for your kidneys lifting weights can be very good for your body also but lifting too much weights can really hurt your muscles and be very bad for you same goes for video games adults for the most part know how to limit themselves but kids do not most kids don't know when to stop doing something if a kid is playing too much video games then it's the parents job to limit the video games for them video games also get blamed with obesity antisocial kids and kids wasting their time books and tv have the same problem these forms of entertainment can be an escape for kids video games have also evolved to where one can play most of the games with friends and experience the game with them Indoor activities usually involve you doing nothing physical. For the most part, it is all mental. If you read a book, watch TV, or play a video game, it is easy to eat food. Just like video games, food and the type of food should be limited. Sometimes a kid might have problems like ADD or clinical depression, so video games can be an escape for them. It isn't so much the video game's fault as much as it is the people that are playing the video game. This is where people like to scapegoat video games. It is easy to blame something like video games and admit that someone is a bad parent. Video games also get blamed for violence like mass shootings. In most of these shootings, the shooter has a mental illness. People like to blame these mass shootings and crimes on video games and also guns. The problem is people with mental illness need to be monitored just like children on what they watch and play. Politicians like to scapegoat these problems on things like guns and video games which most of the time is not the problem. That is why people hate scapegoats, is because it hides the true problem. If video games do not cause the violence and 67% of Americans that play video games would be doing mass shootings. Video games are not just entertainment, but a way to move society forward. There is more that video games can help society with. We have to get past all the useless scapegoats that do not fix a thing and do not get down with the real problem. Humanity needs all the help it can get to fix the problems that we are facing. Video games are going to be a large part of our society, and if you like it or not, video games are growing every single day. You can blame video games for violence and problems, or you can brace the video games and let them help society move forward. As you people on TSG can tell video games can actually really help society and not only are they entertainment but as a way to move society forward and guys i hope you guys enjoyed this video and if a parent or a dumbass politician says that video games are bad for you just remember these facts that i listen to this video i hope you people at tsg really enjoyed this video and if you want more of me feel free to check out my channel and subscribe but guys yet again thank you thunder so much for allowing me to post on this community channel Guys, I hope this was informative, but guys, I will see you all in the next one.